So <clears throat> let's get started. So what is uh, Git? Anybody? So it's version do. control. Version control. Okay. It says Git is a free and open source distributed version control system, right? So understand Git. We should understand what is distributed version control system. Before distributed uh, version control system, we should understand what is version control system, right? So let's start with that. So what is version control system? A version control system is actually kind of a software or a system which uh, helps us record all the change, all the changes to a file or a group of files. What, it, what does it do? It, uh, it's a system. That records. Changes. To a file. Or a group of files. And what it does is basically uh, it. So why does it so that we can and it create work creates, creates version right? creates versions of the files what's the use of creating versions of files so that we can revert back to a certain version if needed revert or recall uh, any specific version of the file or files later. So what I'm trying to uh, get into is, let's say, for example, you have uh, you know multiple files with you, text file, document file, some code, code file, some Python programs are there. Okay. So you write something today. Okay. So after writing, you save it and tomorrow you come after writing today, you save it. It's it works fine, right? Then again, tomorrow you come, you write something, you save it again. Uh, it check it. It's working fine. Third day again, you came. You have made some uh, changes to the file, and you saved it, and uh, you didn't check it that day. Next day, when you come in the morning, you check that. Okay, I need to check whether it's working fine. Whatever changes I have done, it does not work, right? The changes that you made broke the code broke broke the application or whatever you wrote it's not working fine so now you want what you want to do is you want to debug anything you just want to go back to the previous day's version right that you saved on the second day right so basically is there any way of doing that normally can you go back to a, a particular uh, day's version of that file Normally, no, there's no way, right? Maximum you can do when you're working on a file, you can do a control Z or something of that sort, right? But if, after you save the file, you close it. Uh, specifically, let's say you want to go back to two days before's version and all those things, you don't know which version was it, right? How will you know? There's no way. So, a version control system provides you a way to basically record those changes, okay. So whenever you are done with some change, major change or minor change, whatever change, and it's working fine, you create a version. This version control system allows or helps us to create a version. And, you know, it keeps a track, right? After 10 days also, if you want to come back to the same version, which we created on the day two or day one, this version control system helps us to do that. Did that make sense? Yeah. Questions, anyone? Please repeat the point, so. Okay. Uh, when you change any file, whose question was that? Please, please repeat. Who asked? Who did ask? Shiv. Shiv Prasad, yeah. yeah. So when you uh, change any files over the time, right? Let's say you uh, every day came to office, okay? Uh, went to office, you have a single file to work on. A document or a code or whatever of your choice, 
uh, or Excel sheet, whatever. Okay. Every day you are making some changes, saving it and going back. Okay. On the tenth day, okay, somebody comes and asks you, or you only want to go back to the version of that file which was there on day number three. Can can you go back to that state? This question is for shift side for you. No. No. So if you can't do that, right? So that's what version control system provides. It's a software that helps us to go back to a particular version. Every time we do make a change or save the file, we create a version using this version control system. It's saved in the system. And whenever we want, we can recall any particular version on any day. We can go back to a particular version. Did that make sense now? <clears throat> now it's clear. Thank you. Cool. All right. Anybody else? Any questions on that? So it is also called VCS in short. So any VCS will help us, right? It manages uh, the changes uh, of the files. Basically, it is used for code. Okay, over time. Okay. Of the code. Okay. And it keeps track of every modification that we do. Whatever modified, which line we, which modification was done, everything it keeps track of. Is it on day to day basis? You can create 10 versions on a single day. It's in our hands. Oh. Okay. That we control. If you want to create a version today, I create a version now. Then I, after one hour, I want to create a version. I can create one after one hour. It, it's like the choice for uh, with us. Okay. So going back to, let's say, for example, you're trying to uh, uh, create an application of a simple calculator, right? And uh, you may, you made a simple calculator, right? You wrote a code for that, and it was all working fine. And you got a requirement. Somebody asked you, "Hey, why not? Why don't you, uh, you know, add a feature to add a scientific calculator as well in this, right? Have trigonometric operations and all those stuff, right? You just add this feature to it, okay? And you sit down and start writing it for a day or two, and then you saw that it's not working, right? But uh, after two days, nothing is working, basically. So Maybe you want some more days to work on it, but uh, after two days of all the work, uh, your manager or the client or anybody else wants the calculator, at least the previous one, which was working, the simple calculator should work, right? So basically you revert back the code and give it to them, right? So that versioning we, we, we should do whenever we feel that, uh, you know, uh, that has to be changed. So what this, whenever you, uh, uh, this, our code is managed by the version control system, it helps us to create uh, versions and without creation, creation of versions, we can't have the code repository, right? The project. So that's what just forces us to create versions, but whenever you want to make any changes. So that's what it does. And it helps us to basically uh, keep track of every modification and stuff like that. And if any mistake is done by any developer or someone, um, it will compare the earlier versions uh, of the code and revert back to fix the issue. Right, so we want to go to version number n minus one, right? And we can just go back. Right? Okay. Uh, Hello. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what if it's a complex project and uh, we we are totally confused as to which version do we need to get back to? Like, uh, if there's a feature that uh, mm -hmm. you know that's there and uh, we have been working on other part of the code for a long while and uh, mm. down the line we get to know that that specific feature is broken and we'll be totally confused as to you know which previous you need version to know to okay back. so you write okay. descriptions when you create versions uh -huh. okay so it allows you to write descriptions that what you have made the changes so by looking at that you have to make some manual effort to go to that version right so you write descriptions it allows you to write some uh, comments that what ha what changes are you doing? So by seeing that, that will be also tracked. So just go back and see, look which uh, 
uh, version was or, or read the description that okay this was the current or the correct version which uh, needs to be reverted to so you just select that and you go go back to that version okay yeah uh, uh, the recording uh, which is done it is done done after the uh, version is completed or uh, we are uh, writing the code and the, uh, each and every line gets recorded and then and there itself so it records it but unless you create a version it will not be uh, you know permanent okay so so if if the version is unsuccessful so uh, it it uh, like uh, it won't be there right no if okay. you don't create the version uh, it will not keep track okay okay all right so <clears throat> that's that's it uh, for the version control system so it basically helps us to have you know uh, benefit that uh, you know we can uh, track and trace who made the changes as well and all those things let's say what normal scenario is uh, you know in a in a company or wherever uh, these kind this kind of systems are used is let's say there there are there are always will be multiple developers or uh, people working on a same project right not only developers any any uh, you know a data analyst or all the all the uh, you know uh, staff will be working on the same, the same project and everybody will contribute to the project right so this kind of versioning helps us to keep track who did what as well right and uh, everybody can work continuously with, with these kind of system as well so it helps you uh, helps us doing to that basically along with uh, keeping the history Okay. So it also keeps uh, the entire history of what changes were made and who made the changes. Okay. Is there any full form of Git? We'll come to Git and we'll talk about it, but there's no full form of Git. So uh, this point keeps the entire history of what changes were made and who made the changes. This also applies uh, unless or until the version is successful. Yes. When you create the version, see when you when let's say you are doing it right. So the system will know who, who is the username on whose system it is working on, right? And uh, basically, uh, when you create the version, then only it will be. It will keep on keeping the track whenever you work. It, keep on uh, having the track but it makes uh, it becomes permanent when you make a version of it then others can see it okay so uh, so you mean to mean to say is that if there are and there are any problems uh, problems in the uh, new version which we are creating we can go back to the, to the problems because it has the track of it but uh, uh, like uh, the recordings won't be there for it right recordings will be there for, see for example see you are making a version you are making uh, you know uh creating a version right so until you create it how will you how will the system understand that you this is a version number one or two right or anybody else understand there are hundreds tens of people working on it right so when you create a version it has to be known to others as well and the uh, version control system as well how do you do that by making the changes permanent right with the versioning name okay okay right Sir, yep. is uh, Git the only VCS or there are other VCS available and what makes the difference? We'll come to that. We'll, we're going to that. We have not yet okay. started with Git. We are just seeing VCS, okay. which brings us to types of VCS. Okay. There are two types of classifications of uh, machine control system. One is centralized VCS and another one is distributed VCS. Okay. So uh, centralized uh, VCS is also called CVCS and distributed is also called as DVCS. And uh, the differences between these two we'll see in a while. First we see what they are and then we'll compare the compare both of them. Right. So CVCS has a central server. 
has a central server which has this central server has a single copy of the project on it okay and users make changes or we call or we make use of a term called commit we'll talk about it more commit changes to this central copy okay. so this is what it is users make changes directly to the central copy so there is a central server everybody connects to that central server whoever wants to make changes does directly on the central server okay the other one is dvcs distributed does not have a central server or there is no uh, uh, you know uh, does not there is a server of course but does not rely on a central server as the name suggests it's distributed what it means is is basically what we can do is every user right let's say we we all are uh, working on the same project okay so every user all of us can have a copy of the entire project on our local machine and i say local machine our laptops or desktops whatever right so every user can have a local uh, have, have a copy of the entire project on our local machines okay uh, every user in their local machine okay so the changes are not made directly on the central server every user has a, has a copy of the entire project in the local machine the changes are done okay changes are done locally right on the local machine and then pushed to the central server does it work like a blockchain no blockchain is totally different technology okay okay so can you by these you know, seeing these two definitions of dvcs and cvcs can you tell me what can be the advantages of each of them and disadvantages of each of them let's start with do you see any uh advantage of using cvcs over dvcs uh and the and the, rec the recordings can be uh, like directly and uh, the recordings may directly uh, it can be placed like we can directly yeah. know where, where the uh, mistakes are so it's directly done on the server so yeah um, everybody can see it, uh, instantly right here also everybody can see it because if we are pushing it anyway at the end right but this is instantly people can see uh, who has made the changes here it might take some, some time depends on when the user is pushing the changes right because it's pushed from the local machine so yeah that can be a point okay any disadvantage of this guy cvcs over dvcs or the other way around if you any advantages of dvcs over cvcs if we done some mistake and upload it to the central hmm. server okay that that can be changed right that's okay that's the whole point right. it has recording so we just revert back to the older version that's okay so it's like a, uh, hello yeah so it's like a, having a local copy na no? like everybody have a local copy in dvcs uh, like yeah in dvcs yeah. they can have a local copy even if there is a server outage or something they can remotely yes. keep making developments correct this is a very uh, big advantage of dvcs that if the central server goes down if any network connectivity is there issue is there if something goes wrong with the central server right nobody can access that uh, uh, project right here everybody has a local copy on their system if let's say for example something happens to the server 
something happens to your local internet connection right your internet is not working but you still have the copy locally stored entire right you can still walk offline there's no need to be connected right so it's a very big advantage of dvcs and this this is the reason why dvcs is replacing cvcs everywhere yeah. almost replaced okay so you can say uh if the central server goes down in cvcs uh no user can use or you know, modify the changes or modify the files right also the changes we are doing when we save the changes every change we are directly doing on the Maybe. central server sorry we're doing on the central server so every time the internet connection is required so it can be slow right when compared uh, when you're doing locally saving local save is faster than uh, local save is faster than remote save remote save when i say when you save on the server yeah so okay. i i have a doubt yes uh, cvcs is like a central system so hmm. it provides for a better uh, administration na no? yes but without that we can't have in dvcs yes like like it's something an important project or a, or let's say a confidential project is going on then does dvcs plays a role there also no confidentiality this point i'll agree cvcs provides better administration because it's centrally controlled uh, by the admin it can be done even uh, dvcs can be done but uh, cvcs uh, is better in terms of administration but in uh, if if you talk about um, confidentiality or security uh, both are similar there's no disadvantage or advantage anyway both are servers right in central also we have a server distributed we have a server Uh, we have to secure it or uh, you know both of them equally so i don't think there is a difference over there yeah. whenever we see uh, the website is down the server is down mm-hmm. so it is it because of cvcs or dvcs i uh, know uh, so the code base is there on the server okay so the code the the program the application programs are on version control the website is not down because of that the website is down where the applic- when the servers on which the applications are running okay. yes, that's a different uh, concept altogether that can be the major reason there can be other reasons as well okay. but that's a major reason that there's some yeah. issue with the infrastructure where the application is running or the database is down okay not because there's something wrong there can be a reason that uh, it's not able to connect uh, to the uh vcs the dvcs or cvcs but that was not the major reason of a website to be down okay. so usually is a big servers will be connected uh, in clusters and those will be running for running any application right this uh, sent, uh, this uh, version control system is not for running application just for you know doing a version control of your application code that's all that makes sense okay. any other disadvantage of this guy so we saw that uh, the advantage this is not a disadvantage that cvcs provides a better administration this is just an advantage of cvcs but this also provides uh, you know good enough or very very fair uh, you know go- or good enough uh, administration so that's not a disadvantage of dvcs at all but what else can be or is there any disadvantage of dvcs or just it's just the perfect choice for everything can think Manish, of anything yeah 
I am having a question in CVCS. When I update something, since it is a single copy of the project, right? Mm -hmm. If I have updated something, and after some time, someone else is also updated that thing. Mm -hmm. So my data will remain as it is, or it will it will be updated by this someone else. See, every update, every new update will be overwritten by the older one. Exactly. But your changes also will be there, okay. and the other changes changes also there. But who made the changes later will be up. Will be the taking effect, right? So there's the problem of overwrite in CVCS. No, in CVCS that. also it happens the same thing. If I let's say every you have a we we are working on a DVCS. You have your own copy. I have have my own copy. I work on my project. You are also working simultaneously on your project on the same some okay. feature of the same project. Okay. Right? Okay. okay. Now I made the changes. I pushed it, right? And okay. on after ten minutes, you also pushed it. Yes. Yes. So see. So, so I'll, the I'll your copy, yeah, yeah. So your copy will be uh, basically हम बोल सकते हैं आपकी कॉपी चली जाएगी and my copy will remain as it is if I have updated after ten minutes, right? Correct. But what happens is if the changes are not in the same file or it's not having any conflict, तो दोनों के changes रहेंगे वहाँ पर. Okay, okay. And uh, we have to save it as version one, version two. It's like that. Or, नहीं ऐसा uh, नहीं. It 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 basically takes uh, care of uh, version numbering. We'll see that. Okay, okay, right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. But if if we are making this uh, uh, change in the same file in the same line, okay. okay. So yeah. I did a change. I pushed it. Okay. The same line number ten of the same same file. You are doing the same changes. You pushed. You are trying to push it after me. Then okay. the version control system will say no. There is a conflict because this guy. The, I we have some version which you did not have, and you have made changes on the older version. There is a conflict, right? So. There are some version one in the project. We both okay. pulled at the same time. We have all. We both have version one in our system, right? Okay. In file A, line number ten, I made a change. I pushed yes. it. Yes. For the, uh, the the latest project is my changes is updated with my changes. But you don't have my change, right? And you are making okay. the same line change. So when you push, there there is a problem. It will not understand. It will say okay. You have made changes on the previous copy, but already somebody uploaded the same, up, updated the same line. Basically, take that, made some changes, and then uh, come back to me. So this is this situation is called a conflict. We'll see that, and uh, uh, we have to put some manual intervention to basically what you need to do is in case of in in this case, you basically have to take my change, okay. then do the changes, and then again update it. Okay. So there will be no conflict. Okay. 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 Thank you. Making sense? Yeah. So these kind of things happens in DVCS actually, because it's we are having our own copy. We are doing individually, right? Okay. Right. Hello. Yep. Hello. Yes. Consumption. Sorry. Is there any uh, issue or is there any point concern with the memory consumption? Because all of the yes, all of the guys are going to be uh, yeah. Uh, all of the guys in which one? Sorry, I uh, I think it's a different thing you're telling. I understood it. Can you please repeat the question? Uh, matter consumption with the memory consumption because of uh, in DVCS, lot of people are going to be uh, uploading files. Then that time of uh, file consumption of data where on the server. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Both will be same because uh, if it's DVCS or uh, irrespective of DVCS or CVCS, if ten people are making changes, they'll make the same changes on CVCS or DVCS, right? Okay. Doesn't matter. But there is a problem when you save the entire project on your system. It will take memory. Plus the history, everything it gets downloaded when you take a copy. Right? Let's say on project uh, started one year ago. there will be thousands of changes made there will be it's a huge project right apart from that uh, it will store all the history as well right one year let's say there are thousand of changes done so all that changes history will be downloaded when somebody downloads today right so the problem with dvcs is it's uh, it is this is a disadvantage that it takes memory a lot of memory in your system occupies storage 
on the system so it's not ram right it's the physical uh, uh, storage i'm talking about dvcs right also uh, when you when it's a huge project the first time co copying will be taking it will take too much long, a long time right if it's a huge project okay in dvcs if the project is big the initial copy takes time after that it is uh, just the delta changes okay? but the initial uh, copy takes time All right. So, but these disadvantages are very less compared to the disadvantage of this guy, right? CVCS. If something goes wrong on the central server, if the database of this central server gets corrupted, something goes down. Okay, suddenly the connection is lost. The data is corrupted. The server got corrupted, right? So, it has a problem. In this case, everybody has their own copy. So. even if the server gets corrupted we have users who have the copy so we can revert it back right we can you know create the uh, project again using the local copy we might miss few versions here and there which was latest but uh, uh, we will not lose the entire uh, project right making sense manish in the last point you have written if the project is big the initial copy takes time so yeah. what time in order to create a version or in order to no, save no. the copy first copy first copy okay, okay when, right. when we okay. download the uh, project from the central server to our local right okay that okay time. that right okay yeah. okay right thank you that's a very you know uh, simple or very very small disadvantage but yeah it is okay <laughs> Yeah, somebody has a question. Three hands are raised. Oh, Manish, this is Srinivas. Yep. So I have a question. So when we will use this uh, distributed VCS and centralized VCS? By seeing the disadvantage and advantage, can you tell me which is better? Like by seeing all the disadvantages and advantages, which one you will choose out of this? DVCS. Yes. and that is why when i search git what it is it is a dvcs okay uh, usually we are using this uh, distributed cvs yes. right yes so when will we require this uh, centralized uh, dvc uh, centralized version control nowadays system? people are not using cvs yes cvcs if they are on cvcs they are moving to dvs dvcs because of this disadvantage the central okay. copy thing okay thank you and within dvcs also people most of the people are on git they are using git okay so there is one example of uh, centralized which is called svn uh, i forgot the full form but svn sub version okay. so it's a, it's a now uh, centralized uh, vcs it was used before a lot but now people have moved to git because git is very advanced and you know it provides a lot of features okay okay thank you manish uh, uh, even uh, uh, even banking industry also uses uh, uh, dvcs yes most of the uh, uh, people are using dvcs nowadays most of the companies because because banking uh, in banking industry privacy is a big big concern that's what i said both of uh, there is no difference between privacy in cvcs and dvcs i i am not getting the point so please please can you elaborate what what is uh, what you are thinking when you say you know privacy or something of that sort in case of uh, dvcs since, and cvcs uh, uh, yeah. since i come from a banking banking background sure okay yeah uh, so uh, there we have like uh, e even in in our uh, Hmm. employees also the next employees cannot uh, know the data which i am using fine fine that's fine so dvcs provides you privacy there is no problem there 
it provides a privacy okay only people who are authorized can take a copy to your to their local and the local the laptops are also encrypted right if it's a banking sector i understand the data in, uh, uh, security part but yeah that is a dis- disadvantage that because the data is on on a computer people can you know uh, you know steal your laptop and steal the data and all those things are there it's not possible in uh, cvcs right all right i get right. that point but nowadays companies are making their uh, laptops also so secure that if even every, anybody uh, takes that laptop the data is encrypted mm-hmm. right okay and until until the user or the employee uh, give his or her password you can't log in right the laptop as well right right so that's always a concern but uh, uh c it's not like cvcs provides a very you know huge uh, but if if that's the concern that you don't want the data to be in your laptop as well then yeah go to go for cvcs right got it manish yep. hi this is puja here yes, as you said uh, when changes are made in dvcs hmm. we usually push it to the central server right so yeah there's so we there's we a, need to yeah. use cvs na a cvcs no 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 no, no. it dvcs also has a server okay yeah right so but it's the code is distributed among everyone cvcs also has a server but it's everybody relies on that server okay it's on that server that people go and change, make changes directly okay. that's the, that's the difference okay that means we make the changes and then we push to the central server then it is okay and it's not then... okay but that's the way right that's that's, right. that's... Uh-huh. I, i accept that that's the way uh-huh. right okay uh-huh. right thank you okay, um, uh, yeah one more question because yeah. uh, right now i got it clear because uh, in my experience whenever i was uh, okay. I, i was interacting with my technology team mm-hmm. uh, and they used to tell me that i don't have the server access right now so mm-hmm. th- does it mean that uh, they were they are use, still the, using the central server cvcs no there are, again i'm telling uh, this server when i spoke about the uh, uh, version control system server it's entirely different from a server on which your application resides or your data resides or a database is no no uh, yeah okay. because, uh, why am so i asking this because it depends it, on the contents let, let me let me let me get yeah. that uh, so it depends on the context what they mean okay it can be any server for that matter right does not mean that it's on the central server okay even as i said dvcs also has a, a you know server on a remote side okay if you don't have the access you can't uh, clone the copy on your on your local okay so it does not prove that it's on a cvcs yeah i i i'll tell i'll tell the context of, sure. of it um, sure. yeah for, for automation i have given the logic to the uh, uh, technology team okay this this mm-hmm. the logic should be implemented mm-hmm. now the they have uh, uh, they have made the changes and they gave us the uat uh, uat to perform mm-hmm. the uat mm-hmm. now in uat i have found that ki the logic is not working properly so when mm-hmm. i go back to them they tell that i cannot make the changes in, in in the coding because i don't have the server access right now so it can it is possible that it's on the central server but before did you have the access to the code no i, I don't automation. yeah okay. i don't have any access the technology team tell, uh, tells me that okay so it can be either dvcs or cvcs still there is no surety that it will be cvcs okay because both of both of are are on a server okay both of them uh, uh, there is a privacy uh, uh, you know control provided by both of them even git or distributed uh, vcs also has it right unless you have access you can't clone you can't even see what is there in the code you can make it private you can make it secure okay okay got so it so dvcs also has that feature doesn't mean uh, if you don't have a server access it doesn't mean that it's on only on cvcs it can be on dvcs as well hello yep uh, let's just uh, there's a question in the chat i'll take that first shift sir okay so what about the quality of changes are made who monitors quality of the changes uh, kit will git does not have a responsibility okay, here git will just make sure that it has versioning you have we have the versioning okay 
to have the quality and everything we have to use other tools and we have to you know make sure that as developers or at, uh, as engineers we should be uh, you know uh, taking care of that okay did that answer your question is it rangam or rangam how do i pronounce that Yes, this is Rangam. Yeah, Rangam. Yeah, but uh, in that case, like I don't know, maybe there will, there can be havoc like things. Many people are changing simultaneously, changes yes. and all that. So if things are not going right, even yes. the things go like oh, okay. earlier. Okay, okay, okay. Early. I got your point now. So they'll okay. It's not that that everybody can blind, madly or blindly make changes. There will be a process set up that mm -hmm. I make a change. It will go to. It will not directly go to the project. There will be okay. approval processes made in between. Yeah. Okay. So, and in a production okay. or an idle situation, everybody cannot directly make the change. They'll make okay. their change. They'll push it to the central server. It will not be merged to the project until it is approved by, depending on how oh. your admin has decided. Maybe three approvals, two approvals, multiple levels of approvals, right? Something of that sort. Okay. So there is a control. So I got your point now. Okay. So yeah, that's the way it is done. <laughs> okay. So I'll just uh, summarize this. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, I stopped someone. Let's see, Prasad, you had a question. Yeah. Hello, Manish. Yeah. yeah actually, I'm from a sales and marketing background, so I'm not uh -huh. uh, technically aware about this concept. These are totally new for me. Sure. Yeah, but uh, can we conclude in layman language that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about to do are, that. Yeah, so okay. basically we can conclude that uh, oh. working on CVS is like working on Google Sheet, where everyone okay. can make changes at the same time. Okay. And working on DVCS, we can say that we are working on offline Excel file and uploading it to Google uh, worksheet. Uh, that's a good analogy, actually. Yeah, can it's we not exactly the same, but yeah, but you can compare that, yeah. That there can be comparison like that, yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. So I'll just uh, so make a small diagram to make uh, you guys understand and summarize this. So this is the central copy, okay? This is the central server where the project is there. Okay? And this I'm talking about CVCS first. So there are multiple users, user A, user B, user C, okay? So any changes they want to make, okay, they directly make the changes here. So commit is made directly. Commit, we call it when we make change, okay? Like this. In case of DVCS, we have the uh, project here. Okay. This is uh, my local machine. This is your local machine. This is third person local machine. So what we do is we pull the copy here in our local. And the changes are made here only. This commit is done here only. It's not done directly. The commit or the changes made is done direct here in the local system only. And then after making the changes, it, it is pushed. Okay. So I, I think, I hope uh, this is visually uh, clear what I was talking about till now. Did that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right. So let's move. So we'll see some term terminologies uh, that is used that are used in uh, any version control system. Okay, then we'll move to Git. So VCS terms. Okay. First one we will look into is repository. Repository, or in short, we call it repo. So, it is a place where files, current or historical data is stored on a server. So this is basically referring to the project. Okay. So, it creates uh, the project uh, uh, in the Sonda Central server. A repository is, uh, is created. Okay. And here, the project basically or any file for that matter gets stored. So it's a place 
prepare files current and historical data are stored okay, it can be anywhere but typically it can be on our local system as well but if it's on a local system only we can use it right so basically it is on a server understood what is the repository anywhere so when where we can please have, repeat it yeah. once again yeah it's a place where all the files current and historical data are stored right which means we have the project and we have we are storing it somewhere right so either it can be on our local machines or it can be on a server wherever the project resides that's a repository we do not use the term project or folders or files like that we use a repository which means all our files data code program anything is there in the repository that's the place we store okay so uh, so the storage is done on the on the successful uh, coding right or Obviously. anything or anything or anything changes done is stored any changes done. any changes any changes any version you create that will be stored in that repository okay so after version right after version yes in, not before version yes that means after the after the push correct okay but wh where are you pushing where are you pushing it there should be either it's an empty repository first time if you are pushing it right initially you are creating a repository right then only you can push the changes to it right okay okay so That's if clear. let's say you want to store some something uh, right so first you will buy a uh, storage right for example you want to store some uh, stationery so you'll, you'll you buy a uh, you know uh, the uh, stationery box right so that box is a repository where you store pens or pencils or stationery right similarly where to store the files and projects repository is a place that's the term used for that okay okay got it all right then we have something called clone so cloning is basically uh, used uh, when you when we copy uh, you know the data from the remote to the local usually okay but uh, it can be it can be also when we copy the data from the dvcs let's say to our local machine uh, that creates a local repository on our machine okay that happens so that repository gets co directly copied as a repository in our local okay so when we say clone it it is in general is creating a new no no not new creating a repository from another repository okay this is what clone is so basically it's a copy of the this. yes copy of the repo okay. the term cloning is basically copying then we have something called initialize okay. initialize is used as a term for creating a new and empty repository when we create a new and empty repository we say i am creating i am initializing the repository okay that's a term is a term called merge merge means integrate two changes together let's say uh, i have a repository it's there in dvcs i pulled the changes i made uh, made some uh, sorry i pulled the repository i made some changes i pushed it right after pushing i said it will not be directly uh, you know copied to the project or the repository so it can be but Uh, when you push either directly or indirectly somehow it will be it will become the part of that repository right so that when you do that that is called merging okay or i have a local copy okay i don't i do i'm not making any changes right now i just have that copy with me somebody else made the change okay so that person made a change it was pushed to the uh, repository it was merged to the repository means it was you know the changes were integrated with the 
repository after that do i have that changes in my local no no so i have to no. pull, i have to pull that change right that process is called pull that or pulling okay so i pull the change when i pull the change that change gets merged merged to my local repository now can i say that yes right right yes so that's the term it it works both ways either ways right when i push it to the repository when i pull any changes from the repository which is not part of my repo right either ways so merging is clear uh, so uh, hmm. so uh, like uh, a user it is only between the two or it can be n number of users so for everyone it's it's it can be possible right that let's say i made a change i pushed it you made a change you pushed it uh the admin uh, merges both together to the repo that's that's also merging right okay so it can be with any number of users right yeah multiple changes are uh, getting merged together so that's also fine here i should write two or more changes basically clear so then one other so, term is so I, yeah. here uh, in merging like the conflict will not come yes obviously that's what we are doing next yeah yeah so let's say uh, when uh, two different developers or multiple developers or multiple engineers or anyone right uh, this is usually used for developers i'm using the term developer because this are this kit or any vcs is used mostly for the code uh, uh, version controlling but anybody any normal file also you can do a version controller so let's say there are multiple people working on the same repository and uh, uh, as i spoke about earlier as well same file is getting changed on the same so same lines right so i made the same change somebody else made the same change both of them pushed it right now when we try to merge all the changes together both the changes uh, to the repository or let's say we are trying to merge one by one so i made the change both of had both of had the uh, look, uh, exact copy of the repository in our local it was all updated both started working together simultaneously on the same file okay now i made the change first i pushed the changes to the repository okay and it got merged as well okay it got merged to the repository now my changes are updated in the repository now after some time the other person made uh, his or her change and pushed it to the repository now when you try to merge it to the repository there will be a conflict because that line was already changed the person the second person who uh, who pushed it did not have my changes updated in in his or her system okay so that's a conflict in this situation the conflict arises and that situation is also called conflict okay so that means a conflict can happen only on the server not on the user system right it can right now i made a change and somebody else also made a change right they pushed the changes i don't have that change when i try to pull after i made the changes there will be there will be a conflict on the user system right yes on any system. time it tries to merge there will be conflict so ankit Pro, uh, provided uh, yeah. provided already there is some uh, uh, something existing prior to prior yes, to yes. the pull yes how do we know uh, uh, one second let i'll take that uh, ankita says how do we know other person did the changes we will not know so what we have to do is we have to keep on updating our repository which is in local every day morning i come i pull the changes if there i'll just uh, there are commands for that we'll see uh, hands on on that so every day i come or every uh, every day twice in the morning and in the evening i pull the changes so that any changes were made and pushed to the repository i have that with me so there is no conflict so that's a manual intervention we have to do okay you have to take care as uh, users all right yeah let us go ahead uh, when we make a change will the version will not be updated so that the others mm -hmm. while they are mm -hmm. committing the changes mm -hmm. will they not be able to see it they can go to the server and see it no problem but 
it will not refresh automatically on your local system you have to manually pull it that's what i said hmm. right yeah, yeah. so so we have okay. to ideally what you should do i uh, whenever uh, you are making major change to avoid conflicts keep pulling the changes from the uh, central repo so that you have to update it copy with you right yeah. and on top of it you make your change so that there is no conflict okay All right. Any more questions with this? I think one more uh, term is there. Branch. I'll come to that later. First, understand what is Git, what, how it works, and all those things. If I go to branch here, it will be little. Uh, you know, we, I'll be using some terms that you need to know first when we, you know, then I'll come to one more term called branch. So <clears throat> let's go to understand Git. So we have seen Git is a DVCS. and open source dvcs right we spoke about open source last time right so so open source dvcs and let's try to understand how it works mm, before that yeah we'll see basic git workflow okay how the workflow of git works okay first let's say uh, let's assume that either we have created a, a repository newly in our system or we already have a repository on the server and we have cloned it on our system okay let's assume that we are we have done that and now we have to make some change are you on the same page Yes, yes. All right. So, what we do when we change, when we start to make change, we modify the files. Okay. Right? So modify the files. Okay. So, when we modify the file, then there is next step is after modifying, we select the changes. or files file or files select the files that needs to be committed or needs to be uh created a version for okay. so we select the files first then what we do, do is after selecting we add these files or changes to something called staging area come to this and we modify the files where we do modify the files in the working tree or working directory i'll revisit these terms so don't worry and after selecting the files we add these files to the so this this should be a single step add this files to the staging area after that we perform commit which basically takes the file it takes the file from the staging area to uh or or what it does staging area and this stores the snapshot of the changes permanently so basically in uh, simpler terms creates a version okay and then it push the changes to the remote repository let's say github this is the workflow okay i'll come to this again and uh, i'll talk about it <clears throat> let's me try to give an example first okay and then we'll try to understand with a diagram that uh, how git works and how do we usually get use git okay so 
everybody have done shopping online or offline right people who have done online can assume amazon or flipkart or any of the e-commerce e websites where you you select the product and keep it the cart and then pay it for pay for it at the later point of time people also want to have a simpler one more example if you want they want to visualize is when you go to a shopping mall okay you have a a wheel a cart wheel right where you put all the products that you want to buy or a grocery shop right so you can assume any of the two choices okay and how do you proceed with it like what's the step of basically buying anything from a shopping mall or a e-commerce website online what is the first thing we do we do add them first, to our bags yeah before that we go to the place where uh, that item is there right we went we go there we yeah selection or we first search where it is right we first search we go there we pick it up and we put it to the bag or the cart or the or the trolley wherever so this process is the selection process and when i said staging area this cart is basically is the staging area okay and after selecting all the products in the in the cart or in the trolley is it not possible that we change our mind and we put the any product back to the shelf does that happen yes yes so what it means is from the staging yeah. area yeah from the staging area we can deselect the product or deselect the files which we thought we don't want to change now okay so similar to that okay and then at the end when you are sure that okay these are the changes i want to make and whatever is there in the cart or in the trolley now i have to go to the making the bill right whatever is there in the cart will be billed yes or no yes yes so you take the cart or take the trolley we go for uh, billing they will choose one by one and then the bill create the bill we have pay as soon as we pay it's a permanent change that's a commit okay and the, when when, when uh, after this we push the changes to the remote repo so uh, this you can imagine as either the online online uh, product delivers get uh, to your home or you uh, put in the bag and come home with the products right so that you can think as a push right so did that make sense did uh, it allow you to understand the analogy like related to git yeah file changes and stuff okay so having understood this let's see a diagram wherein we see now exactly how git works okay and what do we do so let me open that image for you where is it where is it where is it where is it I'll stop and I'll reshare. Let me know when you see the image. Yeah, it's visible. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Git has three main areas, okay, or three stages. we call it three stages the first stage is the working directory it is the place where we make the changes okay after making the changes okay or uh, after making the changes the file gets modified okay we write something we edit something and all those things let's so say there are two files i edited okay i i edited one file i cre i mod uh, i created a new file so something of that sort is done I, i did so it these are files are changed now okay but this is in my local system all right this is all i am talking about my local system okay 
I have git installed. I have pulled, I have cloned that uh, repository to my local system. This I have done. And now I have started to make changes. So I modified file A and I created a new file B. It was the requirement of my task. Okay. After this, what I do is I put the files into the staging area. Okay. So this is not a physical location. It is a location which is known to get. It's kind of a virtual area. Okay. It's not a folder on my system. It internally get creates a, a, a virtual uh, area for us so that we can put all the files to the staging area. So this is like putting the, all the items in the cart. Okay. So I selected these two files. Let's say I selected one more file, which is C. Okay. Which I modified the some changes and I put it as well. Now suddenly I realize I don't need it. So I put back. So there is no C in my staging area. In the staging area, I only have now A and B. So the, so the files which I want to make version for, I'll put that in staging area. Okay. So that's the step, intermediate step. We do not directly make a version. We first put the files in staging area. After that, that we are confirmed that now we are sure that we want to commit the changes or we want to create a version of, okay. We basically push or not push. We basically commit these files. Commit entire staging area to the create a version, okay? basically commit files or create a version. Let's say V1. When this happens, okay, there is something called a git dot git repository uh, repository. Sorry, got dot git uh, directory, which is all, or always there with this, within a repository. So I said, when we clone the, this remote repository, a local repository is also created in our system. Okay. That is what it, this guy is referring to. So these changes are actually saved to this dot git directory. Okay. This guy, this directory has all the information of what we changed basically of the changes of this version V1. Okay. And then this, when we do a push, we have to uh, run a command again and whatever that new versioning was done, that will be V1 will be pushed to the remote repository. This is a basic workflow. Here, all the data and the metadata and every all the details of my repository will be stored. This guy is the most important directory of Git. I mean, for for version control for in Git. Okay, working directory or working tree is where we work inside the repository and where we modify the files. Staging area is the area where we stores the information about what will go in the next commit or next version. Yeah. Are these three stages and three areas clear? Any questions? Which, which area is on local machine and which area is on remote machine? All three are in local. So I have this segregation here. This is my okay. local, this entire thing in my local machine. Okay. After pushing, it will go to the remote. Yes. So when we install Git and we uh, clone the repository, these these three areas uh, uh, will not be there basically. But yeah, working as soon as we go to the directory or uh, repository inside the repository, uh, when we start modifying, that is our working area, working directory or working tree. We push the changes, not push the changes. We select the items to be pushed or committed that we put it to staging area. There's a command for that. Okay. Here you can see git add, git commit, and there's something called git push. There are the commands. We'll see it, uh, you know, hands on. Okay. So then we put it to the staging area. We may go back if you don't want the change. We keep, we can keep it. Whatever is there is the staging area will be committed with v1 or v2, whatever version name. Git takes care of naming the version. We don't have to worry about it. Then after that, we have to push the changes. Then when we push the changes, then only V1 goes to the remote repository. And then manual, uh, manually, we can merge it to the repository. So the changes are reflected in the main repo now. So this is basically the normal ideal workflow of Git, making any changes to file or multiple files together. Any questions here?
and here the remote repository is uh, with when i when i say this is i'm referring to github this will see what it is and uh, you have to create an account on this so that uh, everybody has their own repository created so that they can play around with it okay so this is what we'll create in a while and uh, before that, I also wanted to say something. Yeah, so GitHub also has Git software with it installed. That's why it understands what we did here, right? So we have locally Git. This also, GitHub also has Git installed and it follows the same structure how it is there as well, in GitHub as well. For the remote repos as well. Any questions on the workflow? Yeah, Manish, one question. Hmm. See, after uh, uh, there is a V1, right? So V1 does not make any modifications to Git, uh, Git directory again, right? So it will directly go to the remote repository. It gets saved in the Git, dot .git directory. So first it will get saved in the dot .git repository, then it will move to the remote repository, is it? Yeah. Okay, and one more thing I have seen some back arrow there, back backward arrow from git directory to again this, like, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, below the check point, check out the project. So what does it mean? Ah, okay, 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 okay. So let me clear all the drawings. I'll come back to this, check out to the, check out to the project. So basically what it is mean, it means is, uh, you go to the working directory. That's that what it, what it means. Check out to the project means uh, you may be outside a Git repository. First, go inside that repository and then uh, uh, basically, or or it, it it may it may be like you pull the changes. Okay. So when you pull the changes, it comes here from the remote okay. to the local repo. Okay, uh, understood. Any other questions with the workflow? No questions. Manish, yeah. Manish, it's written there git add. command we will see that. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Yeah. And the thing is that you have written there version one, right? If we again update it, then the version two will also be created. Then we can push version two also to the uh, remote repo if it is yes. uh, the okay. yes. Either either what you can do is you create version one, then you realized okay, I need to do some more changes. You don't yeah. push it, okay? You keep it. Okay. You create another version V2. Both, when you push it, both will go. Both will go. If you don't delete it, if you don't want this change, delete it, then only V2 will go. Okay, okay, okay. right. Or by mistake, let's say you pushed it, right? V1, V1 mm -hmm. went here. Then you realize there's there was something mistake from your end. Either you revert back or you do what, you fix it here, create a version V2, push it okay. then it overwrites v1 no, v, v2 takes effect which is the correct one okay right, right? Okay. because the latest one always overwrites the other one right okay and one more thing the term which we are using is push push in the simple term we can say that we are saving it or we are sending yes. the file from one part to the another right saving it to remote repo yes okay we can use it okay right thank you just one okay. thing, a uh, remote yes. repo is GitHub and yes. a local part is Git. Local it's part like is that. our system where Git as a software we have installed. Git it. is running. Yes. Okay. Not running, we have installed it and we have created, uh, we have that. You can say yeah, it's, it's there on my system. Yeah. Okay. So basically after, after commit also we can make the changes in the existing version or we cannot. That exists, when you commit version will be created. That version, you can't make changes. Okay. You can create a new version and overwrite the changes that you made. That can so, be done. But so basically, version, if, if, yeah. if you don't want the earlier version, we have to uh, ideally delete it. Not I, ideally, we don't delete it. Ideally, we modify the uh, uh, changes and create a new version. So that will overwrite. Okay. Okay. Both versions will go, but uh, the latest one be uh, one B will be overwritten, which is the actual one, right? which is the corrected one. Okay. But you can delete it as well. 
that means the version which is being sent to the remote repo it's mm -hmm. it cannot be reverted it can be updated again and again it can be updated it can be deleted on the remote repo as well because it also follows the structure of git so do we have control on remote repo also depends if the because company has given you the permission then you can go ahead but usually okay. not everybody will have the access only few people will have the access who you know the project manager or the team lead and all those exactly. things right exactly okay okay that is what matters right. Yeah. right thank you so this process of pushing is okay you can push it the, here also you need to be part of the uh, repo or the project then only you can push it this is okay this is a, a one one level of uh, you know authorization or you know one level of uh, uh, giving access another level no you directly cannot merge it usually in idle scenarios you pushed it but it does not directly go to your project until it is approved by at least two people that's that's what the, that's the uh, comp, uh, you know uh, all the company standards nowadays at least two people two other people uh should come and see your code everything they if this they approve then only they only uh, somebody else uh, who is the admin or they or you can merge depending on how the setup is depends on company to company right so all those uh, things uh, git provides all the you know security and all the permissions and all those things Okay, let me take few questions from the chat. Uh, are we are these terminologies and workflow exclusive to Git, or does it apply to alternatives? So, uh, uh, commit uh, is uh, is uh, this term term Git? Uh, sorry, not Git. Commit, push, merge, conflict. All these things are general terminologies. Okay, but staging area and stuff like that, working directory and all those things, it's specifically to Git. It may be same in others as well but uh, not necessary okay we cannot see the staging area no we cannot we can just uh, we can see which files are there in the staging area but this see this staging area is, as i said it's not a physical area so we can't see it yeah which type of files on which we work on git uh, usually as i said ashish prasad uh, it can be any file any any file and every file it can be a text file it can be a pdf it can be a doc it can be excel sheet it can be a, a program in python java c++ it can be an image it can be anything of that sort git does not have a restriction okay it's very difficult to understand i'm new to this it's my second class uh, it's for everyone bhagwat i think it's a second class so if something is you're not able to get it please do ask me i'll 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 explain it yeah okay sir okay that's why i'm trying to give some real life examples like a cart and stuff like that so uh, anybody who is new to these terminologies are who's not not into technical technical should be able to understand it hello sir yeah so i am completely new to this and i am from non technical background so yes. it's it might be going well to me to understand this so if you have any doubts if you not understanding please do stop me and ask yeah Uh, specifically, I'm not going to understand that why we use this or where to use this. Okay, okay, okay. So I started with that, right? I started with that. Why do we need need versioning? We need versioning because so that if any mistake happens or if I want to go back to a previous uh, version or previous, uh, you know, of uh, version of my file, there's no direct way of doing it, right? Let's forget about coding. Let's forget about any other file. What files do you work with usually? in in day to day life or whatever i'm asking you what so what kind of files do you use uh, files it means like uh, daily call reports in excel format excel like format them. okay let's take that example okay so let's say daily uh, reports you have right now today you got one report right and uh, uh, you made some changes okay to that report or something of that sort right you made some excel sheet changes and then you saved it after making the uh, the changes uh if somebody wants you want to collaborate 
the git or version control system there are two advantages mm-hmm. of it you want to collaborate but collaboration you can just send a mail or put it in a drive and all those things that's fine but another main advantage of this is basically if let's say tomorrow you come and uh, you again you made some changes and that was a mistake done by you somehow you did a mistake and now what is happening is uh, you don't know how to revert back to the previous version which was correct right so in this case either you have to you know uh, ask ask someone to give it the correct version or some somehow right if there is no other copy you only had the single copy of it right how yeah. to go back you will not have that it's overwritten right now right there's no way of going back so git or version control system basically allows you to control and create versions at each step right let's say today you made the changes you saved it as a version tomorrow you made the change you saved it to version number 2 now day, day day after tomorrow what you see is okay whatever the changes you made on the day 2 was wrong day 1 was correct you want to go back to the day 1 changes right that's a, that's a, that's your source of truth so using git or any version control system you can go back to that uh, version of that file yeah it means i can go to the day 1 also day 1 also day day n 100 days later also you can go back to day 1 yeah yeah you work with excel sheet you have seen on the left hand side if this uh, if uh, unexpectedly the excel sheet is uh, closed it asks you that do you want to go to that version or that this version there are two three copies of it created right excel sheet does that ms excel if you have observed yeah. that yes it's an <laughs> auto save option is there sorry auto save option is also there auto save is so, fine but you can't go back right yeah. so if you want to go back 10 days later's version of your file how do you do so git or any version control system helps you to do that yeah i i understood yeah, yeah. um i have a question yes we can download the file also from github is it yes. possible from git downloading we have to clone it that's all otherwise okay. uh, there are other ways of download as well we can see that github when we see the interface of github uh, i'll uh, i think there is a uh, yeah i think uh, there is a option of download we'll see okay great thank you okay. next question can you guys also for me it's little hard to understand okay i hope navya you got it now otherwise we'll actually do a hands on on this whatever i explained now it will be clear when we do it hands on okay so i'll repeat it again still you're not able to understand ask me questions i'll i'll try to repeat it okay can we say salesforce as force as an example of this aditya what uh, can you give the context to this i think it was asked 5 minutes before so my idea was so for example i work on salesforce yes, for my yeah. backend processes so something mm-hmm. similar to this process that you explained to us in the half an hour mm-hmm. something similar a process of this sort happens in our company with regards to backend processes on salesforce so for example okay. they set some initial parameters for checking we upload certain things on it and they pass it on to the second person then there are two level of checkings happening over there if it's correct then it's passed to the third person and then to the final head who will be approving it okay is okay. that any point of time there is any kind of error it's being uh, rejected and it comes back to the original place with the original content that these are the contents which needs to be changed and reuploaded and then passed again again the same cycle basically so i was okay. so yeah similar to that but not exactly but yeah uh, the process can be said that it is similar to that process and aapne jaise bola ki programs and everything can be done on git mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so maybe kya aisa ho sakta hai ki salesforce wagera jaise jo softwares hain programs hain wo is pe design kiye gaye hain ya is pe run hote hain just asking it is just for storing files that's all cool Yep. Okay. Uh, if version if the version one is created and pushed to the remote area after we uh, after if you want to do the changes means what is the process and from where do we need to start? So version one is gone to uh, the remote area. It is merged as well. 
now you want to make the changes create a new version and then push it again okay or after getting pushed to the remote area if you want suddenly there's some issue happens you can even revert back as well in the after getting merged as well you can revert back to the previous version if that version is not correct okay either ways that's the whole uh, you know that's a very pretty much advantage of uh, having uh, version control simply you just revert back okay. hi manish yeah i see yeah actually i just wanted to ask like you know why git uh, i mean are there any other uh, uh, vcs like git or uh, git yeah, they have uh, advanced is it has multiple features others are also there but somehow it got so much popular that everybody nowadays is using it okay okay it is something called big bucket i think that also is there uh, there are certain uh, cloud providers that they provide their own uh, version control systems similar to git right okay. so there are multiple of them uh, but git has been uh, uh, first of all it's uh, open source and others are also open source but uh, it has been uh, you know there for some time now and it has become so much popular and it provides so much features as well it's more secure than others as well but uh, sometimes uh, you might have heard of some news that somebody's git hack github was hacked and they want uh, uh, you know some hackers uh, hacked it and uh, they want uh, some ransom money as cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and stuff like that right mm -hmm. so still it's improving so okay. yeah just wanted to just make a point on that yeah kartik uh, why do we work on git uh, what's the use of it so kartik the use of uh, git is basically um, again the same point to control the version right so i just explained few minutes ago uh, that if you need to go back to your the previous version there is no other way normally so this software provides you to basically maintain all the versions right a large project 20 people are working on the same project how will you manage and control the changes right at each point of time there might be you know uh, situations wherein uh, if you don't have git every 10 people every day at least make some 100 changes right if it's a huge project right continuous uh, file changes are there so there is no tracking mechanism so git or version control system is actually used for that Did that answer your question, Karthik? Yeah, sure. Yes, sir. Well, okay, Ali, okay. We have a scenario here. Okay, 1A, B, 2B, 3C. Person alpha and beta syncs from GitHub at 9 a.m. Okay, person alpha made the following change and push at 9, 10 a.m. Okay, so A, X, and C. What are these A, X, A, B, and C? There are three files, is it? Uh, three lines actually. So uh, oh, okay. alpha alpha touched uh, only line two and beta touched only line three. Okay, so this is a single file with three lines. You mean this, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes. Okay, so alpha touched line number two, change it from B to X, and push the changes. Let's say it's committed, uh, it's uh, merged as well. Is it merged to the remote repo? Yeah, yeah, to the remote repo. Okay. Yeah. Then person beta made a following change push it 920 uh, a b and y okay so what happens here is the person since the person beta has made the changes in line number 3 right so while overwriting git will it is smart enough to understand that okay it will not overwrite that line number b okay so either it will create a conflict or let me see let me see what it will do Let's do one thing. Let's take this, this scenario um, uh, when we do hands on. Okay. It will make more sense then. Okay. You got it. Yeah. All right. Any more questions?
Hi, uh, not related to that, but uh, actually, uh, I want to open Jupyter Notebook in Chrome by default. Uh, I, I work on Mac and uh, it opens, uh, whenever I click on launch, it opens in, uh, uh, sorry. Safari. Safari by default. Make, make your uh, default browser as Chrome, then it will open in Chrome. How do I make it? I don't know. Uh, maybe let's check that after the class. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's take take that after the class. Okay, when we are done with the class. Okay. Yeah? Sure. Now <clears throat> we will see how to get the repository. Right. What do we mean by get the repository? I let me stop sharing and I'll start sharing. So there are two ways of getting and obtaining or obtaining a repository. As I said, what's the one way? Which we, which we have been speaking about how to get a repository on your local system cloning cloning right that's the way that you have a repository that you cloned and you get it you start working on it right you got the repository on your local now let's say today is the day when we a new team has started right let's say we all are part of a new team that got created today now there will be no repository right you have to start from scratch okay so that time, what happens? How do we get a repository? Create it on our system. Correct. We create a repository, right? Initialize. Let's say somebody is a team leader. The team leader will create a repository in the system, make some initial first start some write some code or program, and then what does it do? How to share it with others? push no there's no repository to push initialize it initialize done on my system in report remote repository remote place also we have to create a repository Image. then you right? push it sorry then you push it after initializing a repository and huh. he can push it and then uh um, all can access no, where you will push it where will you push it how does our local system know where to push it? Um, uh, through, through the Git bash, we can push it to the uh, Git. Okay, where exactly? So, we I can mean, create a repo there also, yes. no? in the yes. directory, or exactly. we can create a repo. So, we create a repository on GitHub. Okay. We link these two repositories, which was basically in my local and in my, um, in the GitHub. That also we can do. So we'll see these two ways. Okay. First, we'll see how to do it from scratch, and then we'll see how to clone it. Okay. So when I when I uh, when we do this, it will make more sense if not making sense now. So there are two ways of obtaining a repository. First, it's already there, and it's already there. We just simply clone it. Right. We do a git clone and we clone it. If it's not there, we basically need to create it. Right to obtain it and share it with others so that others also can, can collaborate, right? So you guys correctly said, we'll use Git bash. Okay, so before Git bash, what did I say when I when we installed Git bash? I said something, why are we using Git bash? So why are we using, using Git bash? an what interface between the remote repo and our local machine. Oh, that we can do directly. Why can't we do it directly on Windows machine? Right. What's the use of using Git Bash? The version. Uh, it supports Linux. Linux system. To use uh, the operating system. Right? Yeah. So Windows, uh, you know, uh, we'll use basically the commands. It's, it's like command prompt. Yeah. So we'll use that command prompt, right? We we'll use Linux commands too basically use git okay that's why all right it can be done on windows as well but uh, it's it's good that you know it okay so for that we should know linux commands right if i ask you to create a folder on uh, windows let's assume that you don't know how to create a folder so you learn first how to create it right right click new folder and all those things so <clears throat> the same thing 
how to do using command line using linux command we'll see that first okay clear so let me start sharing again i go here i type in git bash can you see my screen i open this git bash opens just one sec uh it is wrong okay let me know when you see again can you see me yes visible okay so now we'll see some basic uh, commands that is used uh, linux commands that is used for you know creating files and navigating to other folders and stuff like that okay creating new files how to create in linux using command line and stuff like that okay. then we'll move towards using git creating repository and using git okay so uh, what do you see when you open the uh, git bash you see this uh, terminal so what is this basically where is it pointing to uh, users directory users home directory right how do we confirm that we are in, under users home directory when you are on windows you basically can see the in the navigation bar right there is a bar on top of it right you see that okay you, you are you are at a certain position here we can't see it right use dir dir is a command which is basically for um, windows okay windows uh, command prompt it works here as well but there is a command in linux called pwd okay. present working directory so when i use the word directory it means i'm referring to folder okay whoever is new to the term directory i mean folder okay so pwd says i am under c users and hp so it is the home directory of the user which is my user is hp so it's it's showing me that okay what is the command for checking where which is the present working directory or the current working directory pwd right and dir basically gives you what are the contents of the directory it does not give you where you are okay so pwd is clear pwd is clear yeah it's okay. now to see what are the contents in this present working directory there is a command called list okay list but it is short form is uh, basically not list we write we like ls okay when we do ls we got all we get all the contents that we have under this folder okay clear now let's say i want to navigate to documents i want to go inside documents folders for that we need to what we need to we need to change the directory to documents right so the command is uh let me bring it up the command is cd change directory which directory you want to go you want to go to documents cd space documents press enter there is no error means you went inside documents how do we see the current working directory 
current director where am i pwd pwd am i under documents yes clear how do i see the contents of documents by using ls ls ls, LS. LS. I have these folders and files in here. I want to go inside Python. So what I do? CD Python. CD Python. Space Python. Space Python. How do I check? How do I confirm whether I'm in Python or not? PWD. 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 How do I check the contents of this folder? LS. LS. I want to go to learn by folder. How do I go? CD learn by Python. No, we are always already under Python, right? Yeah, we have to use Python. Sorry. Yeah, CD space. Learn by. How to confirm? Okay. How to clear the screen? Clear. No, clear. Okay. okay. Again, to check where am I? PWD. PWD. I'm under learn by. What are the contents? LS. How to see? LS. LS. Which is your batch? First July. First July. July first. July first. So I just copy this. Okay. Right click, copy. How to go inside it? CD. CD space. Space. CD. Paste it. Enter. Where am I? PWD. I'm inside one July 2022 folder. LS. How to check the contents? As LS. LS. We have this py this file which I showed that day Friday for Jupyter Notebook. This is the Git PNG on which we saw the workflow. This is the Git dot txt which we were writing the notes today. Okay. Are PWD, LS, CD, these three commands clear? Yes. Any questions on this? What is the difference between DIR and LS? Uh, DIR is not. Uh, uh, it, it gives you similar things actually. Both are both are gives you similar. Yeah. Okay. DIR also gives the list of all the files and folders inside the present working directory. And LS also does the same thing. But DIR is the difference is DIR is a Windows command, LS is a Linux command. Oh. Now, <clears throat> if I want to create a folder inside this, so whatever command you run, okay, you should remember where are you running from. Then it inside that only it will be run, okay. So I want to create a folder inside this folder. So I am inside this folder, a uh, one July two thousand twenty-two batch. So I want to create a new folder here. So the command is mkdir make directory. Okay, mkdir make directory. There is no space between mk and dir. Okay. So I give uh, the folder name as let's say project. mkdir space project. Enter. How to check the contents? LS. LS. Can we see project? Yes. So on Git bash, whatever is in blue color and a slash after it, it's a directory or a folder. Other things are files. All right. How could I navigate to this project folder? CD. Project. If I do ls, what do I get? Contents. Contents of project. What is the content of project? Currently, no content. No content. We got. We get nothing. Again, clear the screen to go up so that you can see it. Now, create uh, directory is done. Then uh, we see how to create a file. 
remember when you were downloading git installing git you saw something like vim did you see that vim is being installed or something of that sort anyone remembers or just next 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 and done you didn't see what is happening no okay for you guys i, I think for the latest version it's not showing maybe but can anybody confirm me what i'm doing okay if somebody has is on git bash okay so to create a new file okay what do you do on windows to create a file let's say a text file what do you do when you want to create a new file we just right click and choose a text file or word file what word file in this like what do you do you use a application for that right either word notepad word pad pad write yeah. content and then save it yeah so you open a notepad an empty notepad write the content and save it then close it with the cross button that are the steps right you open a new notepad file write the contents save the contents close the file yes, are yes. these the steps yes okay we'll do the same using a command the command will be bim okay bim space and the file name here we give the file name while creating only there you don't need to get it will create with some uh, some random uh, default file name then you save as with some name but here you have to give the file name while creation itself vim space let's say i do test.txt okay i'll create this file all right and i press enter so when you open when you do a right click and open notepad what happens an empty uh, window gets open for notepad yes or no to write it write the contents of file yes or no right yes. right right so as soon as i press enter it will open a new window for me okay it does not open a separate wizard or separate window or a tab in the same terminal it opens a new window the other command uh, line is gone okay we'll go back there how we'll see how to go back so this is the place it gives me to write contents of the file now this is a file basically it has opened a new file for me okay so here it the cursor is blinking so here one more step we need to do we have to go to insert mode to write the contents okay directly it will not allow you to write the contents if i if you write anything it will not work so here we have to do use and you have to go to the insert mode to do that we have to press i so when i press i so if you observe it here down can you see down test.txt new and blah 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 some information is given here right now when i press i see the changes what happens down what do you see insert insert so uh, when you see insert down it means now you can insert contents to the file okay now i start writing so vim is a editor a file editor okay now i have written everything still it is showing insert now how to go back to save and exit before that we have to come out of the insert mode first okay the first step is to come out of the insert mode to come out of the insert come out of the insert mode we have to press escape the top left corner escape button esc did you see it vanished from down yes it means we are no longer in insert mode okay now to come out also there is a command so but it is a vim vim command to 
to write vim commands you have to press colon can you see colon at down at the at the below after going out of insert mode press colon and save and exit or write and exit so i write and exit wq write and quit it means write the contents save it and save it and quit when i do this and press enter the vim editor gets closed and i come out again in the command prompt is the process clear yes any question yes sir if can i uh, can i get that again uh, you said write and exit wq or uh, we do WQ. have enough it is not save and exit write and exit uh writing means you are saving it right so yeah it's saving actually uh so to open a python file we just have to say dot py uh yes if you create a python file we have to just say say a dot py or test dot py that's right okay okay now how to see the content of the file again you can you can use vim and uh, see it but there is another command to just to see the content without opening the editor okay the command yes, is manish yep uh, i was doing uh, along with you and i wrote wq at the end and it's showing an error 492 not an editor command not an editor command you have to press put colon and then wq have you put colon before wq yeah yes 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 uh, okay. i put colon as well we'll come back to you uh, after explanation okay i'll get I'll, i'll ask you to share your screen and get it done okay we'll see yeah i'll just repeat it one more time so i'll open now when you open this vim so again when you open the notepad so it will not be an empty file right i am op opening the same file again so i'll see the contents isn't it are you seeing the contents yes let's say again we want to enter any something into my file i have to modify this file how do we do insert insert, insert. press i i navigate yes. to maybe last press enter new content something i write it here now i'm done how to save it and uh, exit first escape and then escape. colon w yeah escape to then colon wq then colon wq wq the c w and q are small okay lower case i'm done okay, okay. so another uh, this is this modified the file we appended a line here okay there is one more way to without opening the vim editor to see the content of the file there is another command for that the command is cat cat space the file name enter can we see the contents here displayed okay i'll stop here i'll take questions um we can't okay. we use uh, rather than cat can't we use ls here ls will content? ls will not give you the contents of the file ls will give you contents of the folder what oh. files and folders are there in the folder okay right thank you any other questions anyone will stop here anything related to vim cat or any other command Uh, to open file we uh, we can know uh, cd command cd is for to navigate to a directory okay. open and edit a file vim is the tool or the command yes manish yes uh, actually i have been solved my uh, this uh, uh, Jupyter uh, no Jupyter notebook in a D directory instead of home directory. I no problem. 
So will it make any difference? No. Like you were showing uh, all the folders and everything. No, no, no. Uh, when you open it, 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 I think it gets opened uh, where it is installed or by default it. Where is it opening? Have you seen that? Yes, I have installed it in D directory. No, no, no. That's so, fine. But directory. when you launch uh, the Jupyter yes. notebook, have you seen it where it is uh -huh. getting opened? Yeah, it is uh, uh, using command prompt when I'm uh, uh, opening it. Using uh, I put the D over there, uh, and then it gets opened in uh, this. Yeah. So if if that is working, then fine, right? There's no yeah, problem. It, it is working fine. Yeah. If it's working fine, there's no problem. Yeah. You decide where you want to create folders and files. No problem. Yeah, I, I was just, I was just a little confused right? because. No, 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 no uh, problem. You, you can you install it anywhere. Bash. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Manish. I have a question. Yeah, before that, uh, yeah, yeah, you can. People who want to leave can leave. I'm done with the class today. Sorry, it got extended. So, uh. I'll, I'll I'll have one request. So today we uh, started late, so it's okay. But uh, I lose track of time. Okay. So if somebody at ten o'clock remind me to stop, it'll be really great, right? Because everybody else also have commitments. I have also commitments. So I don't want to extend the class. Right. So today is okay because we started late because of issues. But uh, from tomorrow, it is a request from my end because I lose track of time. Okay. Yeah, people can leave if they want. We are done with the class.